Okay, welcome to the uh, latest installment of uh, my assembly of the DJH A8 kit. Uh, and in this program, we will hopefully finish the chassis. Well, we'll finish the chassis to a certain extent, not completely, because it's better to wait till after painting to do certain of the details. If you can remember in my last program, I mentioned that there was um, some wiring to do. Well, there's not really much point assembling the uh, plunger pickups in totality because you'll just have to take them off to paint them. So um, I've left them off for the moment and I'll assemble it after painting, hopefully this week. So we've got the plunger pickup housings which you remember we glued in the last time uh, and I've done a certain amount of cleaning up um, of the cylinder fronts and the uh, uh, slide bars. I've also added, um, as I mentioned in the last one, I've mentioned added 0.5 rivets in four places on each side in the um, cylinder drain cock operating rod so it gives it uh, makes it look like hinges uh, and that's the way that this stands the other thing I need to uh, remind you is that when you um, when you assemble the chassis there's no fixed spaces at the back this part here if, if you remember you put that in to provide the spacing at the rear and for the um, suspension for the rear axle there is no other means of keeping the two uh, chassis sides apart at the back. It's very important that when you do this, uh, if you've run into a problem already, that you keep measuring the distance between the two chassis sides to make sure that it's consistent. I failed to do this, so I noticed it after I completed the, uh, the last stage of um, the assembly and I've had to done, do a certain amount of reshaping of where the chassis comes out at the back to make sure that it it's parallel all the way down. I know there's little point in me mentioning this now but this is one of the things that you're more likely to, um, one of the problems that you're more likely to come across if you do uh, choose to assemble this kit. So as I mentioned what we're going to do today uh, we're going to do pages four and to a certain extent page five of the instructions and that consists of actually not very much it's uh, assembly of the connecting rods we've already made the coupling rods because we made them when we uh, we when we did the suspension for the middle axle so they're already made they don't have to be made and I've cleaned them up in the meantime as well uh, there's a certain amount of pipe work and some of the um, sand pipes well all the sand pipes actually there's four sand pipes and four steam pipes associated with them but like I mentioned in the last program these locomotives didn't have downs um, down sanding so they, there's no steam connections to the sand boxes it just had normal gravity sanding but steam driven uh, and if we move over to page uh, 5 page 5 basically consists of bogey down here which is a one-piece casting with a couple of uh, etch parts which I, I will either solder or glue on as I seem to be appropriate at the time and also if you've opted to do a locomotive from about 1949 onwards uh, the positive lubrication drive but all I'm going to do with this I'm not going to fit uh, the connecting rod and the uh, the eccentric rod at this end all I'm going to do is fit the drive rod the drive um, eccentric on the outside of the wheel uh, and I'll explain to you when I've done that uh, why I've done that um, 
and then that will be the chassis completed with a bit of luck I'll get a chance to put the motor in and if all goes well at the end of this I might be able to give the chassis a little bit of a run see if it runs freely okay so if you bear with me uh, I will prepare the bits for the uh, connecting rods and then I'll talk through what I'm doing uh, and when I've done it Right, the uh, A8 kit, the um, connecting rods consist of three parts. So you have uh, a two thickness part for the main bit uh, of the connecting rod. And then there is an overlay which uh, goes on the big end and has a certain amount of um, half etch detail on it. How I do this, uh, if you notice, I keep the rods connected with their common half etch connecting piece here. I haven't cleaned them up to any extent so this part helps me keep them together uh, and I fold them over so that they're roughly lined up and then you can use a pair of pliers just to get them completely lined up and then on my work plank, I've uh, this is the other one. I've got a 2.3 millimeter drill this end, and 0.9 at the other end, which fits the uh, small big end. Drill two holes in the wood, and then put the uh, the drills in wrong way up the shanks first, and then use them to centre the parts. I've fluxed all around them, and now I'll just go off and solder them uh, solder them up and then they'll be complete and then I'll pull them up and then I'll clean them up quickly uh, and that will be the connecting rods done then all we've got to do then is connect the uh, respective connecting rod to uh, the crosshead and piston um, that we did from the last one and then we'll take it on from from there with the, assembling the motion putting the wheels in etc etc Okay, so now I have my pair of uh, connecting rods for uh, the front drive. If you remember, it's two long parts with the little end and the big end, and an overlay for the big end. When you clean them up, make sure that you don't dress off this part, the part at the top that's not very good uh, something dark don't dress off the bit at the top which you can see sticking up that represents the lubricator uh, pop the sight feed for the lubricator and if you if you want to go the extra mile you can drill a 0.4 millimeter hole in the top and put a short piece of wire in the top of it to represent the cork so having soldered these all around I've dressed them off uh, firstly with a Dremel with a disc lightly then with a needle file which is fallen on the floor somewhere uh, but it's the diamond encrusted one that I showed you the other day then one of my wife's ubiquitous uh, nail filing boards and then finally I've cleaned it up using uh, a steel brush in a uh, another Dremel um, I prefer that to um, fiberglass pencils because mainly you don't get threads in your fingers um, so what we'll do now is we'll prepare these uh, rods for mounting on the on the wheel bearings what I what I've downloaded from the internet and sure I'm uh, plenty of you have done the same I've downloaded a sheet like this uh, and basically what it does is for the BA thread number or screw sizes it tells you 
in millimeters uh, what kind of drill you need to for tapping and what kind of drill you need for clearance so the uh, co uh, connecting rods are mounted on the crossheads using surplus 12BA screws from the Slater's wheel sets. If you remember, the front and the middle driving axles use screws from, which are provided in the kit. So you're left with um, four 12BA uh, screws, bolts, um, and these are used to uh, connect the connecting rods. Uh, sorry, the yeah, the connecting rods to the um, the crosshead. Um, and the piston. So I'll go away and do that uh, and then show you what I've done. Uh, on here it says uh, the clearance drill is 1.3 millimeters. I won't use one that big because the head isn't all that big so I'll probably use 1.2 or 1.1 and then ream it out because um, the the uh, little end of the connecting rods isn't all that big and if I went to 1.3 straight away uh, this likely that I would damage the end of it. For the big end I have a parallel reamer which I bought from Just The Ticket which is exactly the correct size for uh, a Slater's bearing, um, a Slater's wheel bearing if I can find it. It's in here somewhere. Oh, here it is. So I bought this from Just a Ticket. They're available elsewhere, but it's a parallel reamer and it's exactly the correct size for a Slater's wheel bearing. So I'll use that in the big end and I'll drill out the little end, fit them to the uh, cross heads uh, and piston rods, and then I'll show you what I've done. Right, so I've assembled the uh, connecting rods to the uh, crosshead, and, uh, a crosshead and piston rod. As I mentioned, I used my special parallel reamer for the big end and the little end, which is behind, which accepts the um, 12BA bolt out of one of the Slater's wheel packs out of the um, little plastic pot. Uh, that was 1.2, 1.2 millimeters was fine. The the nut on the outside that secures this is in is in the kit, is in the um, in the hardware pack, uh, in the hardware pack uh, and they're brass 12BA nuts. So I threaded it through, done them up tightly then just up, waggled this a little bit so it works a little bit loose so there's a bit of play in it. When it got to that stage cut off the end with uh, my hardened cutters and then dressed off the top with uh, the needle file and then used a tiny bit of Loctite 603 unlike the other day I've not flooded it. Uh, Loctite 603 to uh, lock the nut in place uh, and that should be ready for fitting when I when I put the wheels on. So I'm going to put these to one side uh, for the um, thread lock to to go off. Uh, and then what we'll do is we will move back to the chassis. We'll put the wheels on, um, and we'll put the coupling rods and everything on and see how that goes uh, uh, and I'll show you what I've done. Okay so we've assembled the uh, driving wheels, the coupling rods and the connecting rods. If you remember the, uh, the wheels are actually in pairs because they've uh, all got different balance weights and if you look from the top you can see that you have in effect two four coupled uh, wheels at the bottom and unusually for a locomotive the connecting rods are actually on the inside 
of the coupling rod. So I've done that. I haven't. I've done very very little um, fettling to the to the chassis, and as you can see, it runs pretty well. There, there are there may be one or two tight spots, uh, which can be sorted out with a little bit of judicious filing. I haven't fixed the um, the nuts or anything on the. Um, on the uh, uh, coupling and connecting rods uh, and although you may be tempted to I wouldn't um, except possibly the rear one the rear bush the rear um, connecting rod bush you can probably reduce that one by one and a half to two millimeters in height and I'll, I'll do that a bit later uh, for that one, but the other ones I wouldn't be tempted to um, adjust the heights of the bearings um, especially the Slater's ones which may appear at first glance to be slightly too tall I think that if you reduce the height of those it will put everything else out of skew certainly if you reduce the height of the middle ones the front coupling rod will be at an angle rather than parallel um, and because the connecting rods are quite thick because uh, they're three layers rather than two they do tend to take up most of the height uh, available on the Slater's axle axle bush so I would leave certainly leave the front and the the front and the uh, middle Slater's axle bush as the height that they are they are supplied at uh, and by all means reduce the rear one by a millimeter or so um, and I'll do that a bit later um, again with trimming the the Slater's screws and the ones supplied in the kit by all means trim the back one and the middle one flush with the nut um, if you prefer um, cast nut fixings then by all means use those but please remember this particular locomotive the uh, coupling rods were connected with castellated nuts so a nut is quite appropriate um, if you if you look at um, any full-size photo uh, of an A8 you can see the nuts are castellated so they they've got sort of cutouts in them um, um, what I'll do is later I may drill out one of the faces of the nut and put some 0.4 millimeter wire in so that it looks like a cotter pin um, I may do that later it depends how how I'm feeling with regards to that the front one do not trim that off because what you're going to do is if you move on to page 5 um, Ignoring the uh, sander pipe work, we're not going to do that for the moment, um, or the injector pipe work. You're going to fit these parts E22 if you've opted for a locomotive that has got um, positive lubrication. And the way that I'm going to do that is that I'm going to take the part off the um, well, I'm going to leave the part on the sprue for the moment. Uh, there are a number of them. There, there's one spare as well. And I'm going to tap the uh, large large bit, 12BA. So all it will do is it will just screw on the end of the... Um, it will screw on the end of the, the bolt that you use for the... Um, uh, for securing the crank pin um, there may be a temptation to do the alternative method of uh, fixing um, crank pins with slaters by inverting the bush tapping them 10 ba and using a 10 ba bolt it won't that that won't work for this kit because of the way that the uh, the motion is laid out and well, 
and when I say it won't work you can try it but um, it's been designed this way and I would certainly go with with conventional method for uh, fixing the um, the uh, coupling and connecting rod bushes so what I do is I'll go away I'll pick my two E22s off the uh, chassis sprue I'll tap them 12BA and I'll fit them um, and but I will leave the rest of the positive lubrication motion off because um, all you'll have to do is you'll just have to take it off when, when it's painted um, and it's much easier to assemble that after the chassis has been painted. If I can do the other few bits and pieces that are, are needed to do, I might be able to paint the chassis over the next coming days and then show you, show you it completed with the motor fitted. So I'm going to go away, I'm going to fit a couple of, couple of parts uh, and then I'll come back and show you what I've done. Okay, so I fitted the uh, eccentrics for the uh, positive lubrication. I've drilled the end 0.8 millimeters and then tapped it 12 BA uh, and then just screwed it on and done it up tight against the um, the retaining nut. Looking from above, it looks just about in line. So this is the dummy end of the motion that was part 19 from the other day and then there's two parts that run between between there and there. There's a rocking uh, lever and a connecting rod but I'm not going to fit those for the moment. Um, I'll fit those after it's painted. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to skip doing the, uh, the sand pipes for the moment and I'm going to move straight to doing the bogey. Uh, while I'm doing that, I will fit the rear wheels uh, in in the uh, floating axles at the back, and then then we'll have uh, a correct 462 chassis. Okay, so I'm going to go away and do that, and then I'll show you what I've done. So we've done the work on the bogey. Now the bogey comes as one casting, it's one complete casting uh, and if you can see on the end there is one etched part which is, um, let me find it's E99 off the main body etch um, and when you look at the casting, take the casting out of the packet there's not an awful lot of flash on it, um, although it does need cleaning up a little bit with uh, by a combination of a scalpel and the ubiquitous nail nail board. Um, what I would suggest is that when you do it, you make sure that you dress off the fronts of the axle boxes. Uh, otherwise it's extremely tight and the wheels may not go around. The axles are quite a loose fitting so it's quite free running. Now I've made a modification to this part, quite a large modification. Um, as it comes, the mounting hole in the middle, there is just a dimple. It's not drilled out. Certainly in my kit, the casting just had a dimple for you to drill out. Now what I've done is uh, I've cut a, an oval in, uh, in the top mounting plate rather than allow it to just be rotating around the, uh, the shaft. How I did this is in the dimple I drilled a 0.8mm hole on either side of the dimple where the dimple and the flat bit joins then I enlarged that to 1.4 millimeters each hole and then I drilled out the hot those holes both of those holes 2.8 millimeters uh, and that just left a little bit in the middle to dress off using a, a triangular shape file uh, and a scalpel just to cut it off so I've got a nice, nice oval there, uh, and 
it it slides quite nicely in the slides quite nicely over the um, over the, the um, uh, mounting shaft and what I'll do now is I'll fit the uh, all the other bits if I can find them <laughs> so what we've got is we have got um, a number of washers um, two of the washers are recessed and they're on the chassis edge um, and one goes up against one goes up against the mounting plate then you put uh, the spring which I had a moment ago there it is the spring spring goes on top of that and it sits in the uh, the half etch cup uh, and there should be another washer somewhere well take my word for it there was another washer here a moment ago uh, I'll just look for it if I just stand up hopefully it hasn't, hasn't gone pink well I don't know where that's gone no doubt I'll find it later but luckily for that particular part um, there are spares so there's the spare there so I'll just cut that out quickly um, I need to drill it 2.8 Okay, there's my second washer that just drops over the end so the spring is between the two cupped washers so all you need to do then is to just hold that down and fit it over the top preferably without it pinging off into oblivion yeah like that Yes, this might be one of the operations where you need three or four hands to do this. What was that? No, I'm... I'm sorry. sorry, I thought you were talking to So, there we go. That's fitted over the top. Then, there are two nickel silver washers that go underneath. So probably the best way to fit them is back to back and there is a two an M2 screw and that retains the whole shooting match in, in, under the front of the locomotive let's just get that done okay so there's the fixing and now we mount the whole thing on the track and it is no longer front heavy the screw the bogey holds it up quite nicely a little bit of a tight spot but we'll sort that out when we uh, when we've painted the, uh, the chassis um, which I'll probably do tomorrow now all that is really left to do on this uh, bit before the chassis can be painted is to fit the um, to fit the four sanding pipes. If you remember when we fitted the sandboxes, we drilled our holes at the front uh, and in the sandboxes here. There are castings. They're white metal castings, and the wires. Um, a combination of 0.7 and 0.5 millimeter wire for the uh, sanding pipes they fit into the castings and if you remember I said that I wasn't going to solder them because, solder them because the parts are quite delicate um, but I will solder the wires to the um, uh, to the pipes to the uh, delivery valves um, but not fit them um, and I'll do that using 
uh, indirect heat, low melt solder, tin the wire 145, tin the wire 70, use indirect heat into the um, into the valve so you don't melt, melt the valve uh, and then you shape them afterwards and then there's a, a piece of 0.5 millimeter wire that needs soldering onto the bottom which is the steam delivery pipe and that just goes off underneath uh, and that can be tack soldered to the inside of the chassis so I'm not going to show you doing that um, uh, it's relatively straightforward um, there are good close-up pictures of it in the instructions uh, and I will just show you that after it's been done but uh, that will be after the chassis is painted so um, I hope you've enjoyed this uh, all too brief section and now we have as near as damn it a chassis that runs reasonably well just needs a slight slight adjustments here and there and uh, it will be ready for painting which I hopefully I'll do tomorrow uh, and then on Monday I'll go through what I've done with the other bits that I've missed off these these bits so there's the four sand delivery wires and there is one um, water delivery wire uh, for the live steam injector uh, which is under here um, I might show you that that particular one or I might leave it to when the body's assembled because it's got quite a convoluted route and it's easier to actually do it uh, when the chassis is well I think it will be easier to do it when the chassis is attached to the body so I'm not going to bother to actually I am not going to bother doing that now um, but it will be done when the um, when the body is uh, gets to that stage it does mention in the, uh, in the instructions if I should just show you quickly um, this is the this is the part over here that I'm referring to it's uh, one millimeter wire uh, and there's a note um, on the uh, on the other page where you fitted the hold on, let me find it right if you remember back to when we did this this bit the other day which is uh, page two there there's the live steam injector and there's a note under it which says see drawing 4 and drawing 11 well drawing 4 is what I've just showed you and drawing 11 is the underside of the body it's down here in the, in the bottom corner and that shows you the route that that wire has got to take so a bit probably be easier wait to wait until we've got the body to that stage before we fit that and we're not gonna we're not gonna bother with it now so that's the working chassis I'm gonna um, do the valves for the sandboxes solder the wires in I won't show you that but I'll show you it after it's painted uh, and we're gonna fit we'll fit the motor after it's painted I know the motor doesn't quite fit um, unlike the Slater's one so this spacer here that spacer there is going to have to have a notch cut in it so that the motor sits parallel to the chassis um, but I'll do that uh, before it's painted um, I won't show you doing it uh, because it, it's like anything if you fit your own motor then you might have to adjust this that and the other so there we go thank you for watching hopefully I'll be back at the beginning of next week with a painted and completed chassis and then I can show you what I've done uh, and everything um, and then we can move on there to start assembling the body thank you for watching Well, 
welcome back um, and as they say a day is uh, a long time in politics but it's also quite a long time in modeling so after what I did uh, the other day uh, with assembly of the chassis I have managed to paint and complete the chassis all that's left is connecting up the uh, pickups and putting the motor wires on the wiring associated with the pickups I've fitted if you can just see there I fitted the rear and the front sanders with the steam delivery pipes um, I've made the bogey assembled the bogey and I've also assembled the positive lubrication drive on both sides so that's on both sides materials for doing that are supplied in the kit um, and basically consists of 14 BA nuts and bolts uh, I would strongly suggest that um, certainly if you're intending to build this kit that you invest in a packet of 14 BA nuts they tend to uh, disappear at an alarming rate but then again you may be uh, a bit more judicious with them than I, I tend to be they tend to shoot off um, and disappear and then I normally find them a couple of weeks later so that's the chassis I have tried running it again when I said all I've got left to do is the, um, the wiring for the pickups but I've also if I can tilt that forward if you remember I said that the motor doesn't quite fit in this one and you may just be able to see where the gear wheel for the motor is I've had to cut out a slot in the spacer this slot is about three millimeters by 15 or so uh, and the motor fits between it and the other thing that I've done is I've drilled two 0.9 millimeter holes in that spacer and what I'll do later when when I've given it a a test and run it in I'll put a wire that will run over the top of the motor uh, and keep the motor horizontal so just to prove that it isn't a fluke I will just test run it just briefly for you so I use a, um, a bench power supply which is completely variable it does uh, 0 to 30 volts uh, at 0 to 3 amps and I can also um, uh, I can also um, uh, I can also limit the current if necessary as well so if you if you've got something that you're not particularly sure about and it overruns uh, then um, you can limit the current so the motor doesn't burn out but it, it was quite an expensive purchase um, but that's me I, I use it for other things as well so here we go I'll just turn the power supply on and I'll just there you go it's running uh, it says 1.7 volts and about 0.1 of an amp to get that uh, and that seems to be running very very nicely indeed 
I have tried it on a bit of track and uh, it does it does run a, it does run okay um, but what I will do is I'll leave uh, further tests running um, until I've done the pickups uh, and I'll move on from there to the body so there you go there's there's the chassis built and running very smoothly I'm extremely pleased with it it's relatively easy to put together provided you take care and what you need to do is you need to check and measure check and measure check and measure continually while you're doing this make sure that the width of the chassis is consistent all the way down as I mentioned the other day make sure the uh, crossheads and slide bars are a nice smooth fit make sure that the connecting rods actually sit fully down on the uh, on the Slater's boss make sure that the coupling rods are a good fit uh, in the uh, on the other uh, bosses supplied in the kit take your time take care and hopefully you'll get something approaching this I'm very pleased with it okay so I'm going to put it down now and I will um, the next time I will start with doing the body so I hope you enjoyed building the chassis and we'll do the body next thank you